The Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, says we are about to see it go from bad to worse. Senator, good morning. Uh, good morning. What do you mean by that? Well, I think Syria is a contagion that's really uh, affecting the whole region, but I doubt if there's anybody in modern times been more ill prepared to be president than Barack Obama. He's never created a job. He's really never had private sector experience. And on the foreign policy front, I think his foreign policy was simply, I'm not Bush. I'm a new kind of person. I'm a reasonable, rash, rational person. I'm going to engage the world. And, you know, he went to Berlin and throughout the Western Europe and had thousands of adoring fans shouting, shouting Obama. He went to Cairo and made a speech about let's start over. And he got the Nobel Peace Prize for just not being Bush. I think he's a well-meaning fellow, but he's uh, quite frankly in over his head. And Senator, when you say what, Barack, what, what should he have done? Do you believe? Well, I think he should have uh, understood what's going on at this moment in history. That the political upheaval you see on your screen is a contest between people who re reject uh, totalitarian, corrupt dictatorships and who want a different way of life, a better way of life, and people who are radical Islamists who want to take the world and the region back into darkness and we're on the sidelines and we're weak. You know, he says two things he's done. We killed bin Laden on his watch. He de deserves credit for that tactical success, a strate strategic opportunity lost. But is anybody in the Mideast intimidated by the fact that we killed bin Laden? Has it translated to making us safer? No. It was a tactical success. Strategically, it's been a complete blunder. And John Kerry at the Democratic Convention said, Ask bin Laden if he's better off. Well, here's my retort to that. Ask our diplomats and American interest in the Mideast if they're better off. I want to get to Benghazi in a moment because I know you don't believe the fact that these demonstrations were spontaneous. You've said that throughout the week here. But even you supported the overthrow of Gaddafi. And I you did. supported I the overthrow do. of Mubarak. Yes. Why? Because the people, the Islamists lost the election in Libya big time. They got 10% of the vote. But they're not going to go away because they lost the election. They're trying to undercut the Libyan government and drive us out of the region. Uh, the people in Egypt who are inspiring the violence against our embassy are Salafists. They got about 20% of the vote. When there's a lack of American leadership, people fill in these vacuums. So when, I, when, you, when you ask me what is uh, Barack Obama's foreign policy, I think it's tepid. I think it's leading from behind at a time when we need to be leading from the front. But you know, when everybody was shouting for these demonstrators to take to the streets and bring back democracy to places I'd never seen it before, everybody thought that was a grand, great idea. And now in Egypt, you're left with Mohamed Morsi, who has clearly shown publicly, who knows what he's saying privately, that, that he's not necessarily a friend of United States policy. Well, I that, tell that, you that's what. That's a big, big deal. Well, you either shape history or let history shape you. And Morrissey was meeting with 50 American business people at the time the embassy walls were breached, talking about opening up business opportunities for Americans in Egypt. As Egypt goes, so goes the Arab world. The Muslim Brotherhood's charter is disturbing, but if democracy is allowed to progress, they will either reform their agenda, deliver for the Egyptian people, or get beat. It is in our interest to be on the ground in Egypt and make sure that a mark, democracy continues to evolve. It's not in our interest to let our uh, uh, consulate in Benghazi, Libya, go unguarded. And to say that this was not a coordinated attack by Islamic radicals is a very dangerous mis misunderstanding of what happened. Let me get to happened. that now because there are two points I want to get to in the short time we have yeah. left. You say it defies common sense. To sure. think that this was spontaneous, you're calling for a congressional investigation. What do you think was at work here? Well, look at uh, Egypt. Did anybody come with a truckload of mortars? Did anybody come with heavy weapons uh, to breach the walls in Egypt? What was up here is a pre-planned attack, in my view, of Islamic radicals who are trying to drive us out of Libya and undercut the Libyan government. The Salafists want us to leave. They could care less about a modern Egypt. So we're fighting forces of people who will live with us uh, differently than, than we are, but in peace in the modern world versus people who will take us into the darkness. So I think Congress should investigate yeah. what happened at our consulate in Libya because other, I think the difference, the difference between a planned attack and a riot is night and day. Now one other point here, Afghanistan. It's popping yet again. What is our yeah. policy there in 20 seconds or less? 
Uh, Poll-driven politics. The commanders wanted 40,000 surge forces. They got 30. When he announced the surge forces going in, he announced the date they were coming out. He's withdrawn the surge forces against his military commander's advice, and the security situation is deteriorating. People in the region think we're leaving. Our enemies are emboldened, and our friends are unsure about who we are and our commitment to the region. Therefore, things are falling apart. Senator, thank you. We'll check in again with you in your office and see what happens with this investigation in Congress. Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. Thank you, thank you sir. Martha.